The Arctic wilderness, unspoiled and raw. A changed and changing landscape. An evolving ecosystem. I think people get quite mesmerized by just how beautiful the light is. Because the sun is so low, it really reflects off the snow, so you get blues, pinks, purple skies, and then, um, so there's this kind of minimal landscape, but at the same time, there's so much in it. There are three seasons in Svalbard. Northern lights winter, sunny winter, and this is polar summer. The mission is to get well-prepared guests so that they do good choices when they come up here. Minimize sort of the footprint in nature and also in the local society. So that when we really started working on sustainability 10 years ago, the common thing to do for visitors was to go as far away from Long Beach as possible. But in our perspective, the best thing you can do is stay as close to Long Beach as possible because then you leave uh, a small footprint in, in nature and also climate-wise. If everyone seeks the untouched, eventually there'll be nothing left untouched. The environment is changing here. When we're coming here and being here, we are leaving uh, some traces and the idea is to sort of not leave a trace. With the trips I do, like we try to make sure that, I mean, it's all non-motorized, so we're just, we're hiking. So that, is, that does have a minimal impact on the landscape, but it doesn't have not, no impact. We are, of course, walking on the tundra and uh, on the glaciers. 9,500 years of breeding. Powered by heart, powered by love. Come in! Yip, 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 yip! Bravo! Dogs, they are in a way, that's a traditional way of traveling for uh, the Arctic people and uh, the very nice thing of offering this uh, experience to people is that it's actually that they should to have that, this experience with the dogs itself to learn how the dogs are working in a team, how they listen to the driver, that they actually move so nicely and silent across the tundra here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's getting even greener from year to year. More birds are coming, all signs of, of climate change. The most uh, visible thing is that we have lost most of the sea ice in the fjords here. This was actually totally ice covered in the time when I was coming up for the first time. That's why we also bring all the politicians, you know, to see a melting glacier. This is like the symbols of uh, climate change. But there are so much more uh, that is uh, not known because it's small, tiny animals, small, tiny plants. But you have to start with maybe these bigger things so then we can start communicating this to the more general public. We want people to acknowledge uh, the nature and the vulner vulnerability of nature, but also about climate change and how you actually impact climate when you come here, but also what you can do to minimize it. The wise word from this wanderer? Well, that's all about not wandering too far. It's a good idea to join an organized trip because the odd tour operator will guarantee to the best of their abilities that, you know, you stay safe, but also that, uh, that the nature that we're walking in or traveling through is also can, can remain protected. So I think that's an important aspect. And then, of course, to have an interpretation of the place through the eyes of the of people who live here and work here and who sort of know the place very well. So you're allowed to go into the wilderness, but we don't want people to roam around in the unspoiled nature. Instead of just opening new areas and, and trying to find a place where you can experience nature on your own, it's much better to do it organized with a guide uh, on a path that is already laid and, and uh, in that way, you sort of experience the un unspoiled without doing any more disturbance. Experience it, protect it. So what do visitors take home with them from the top of the world? It's very important also to me that we don't go to the wilderness and disturb it because we are visiting uh, the animals country. I have been uh, very surprised that you went going by boat after 10 or 15 minutes. 
You see whales, so you don't have to spend three hours on a boat before you see something very spectacular. You can see it very close to the city without disturbing the environment. It's impossible to look at this sort of quality, this beauty of nature and not want to go explore it. It's a very fragile ecosystem. I'm totally in support of being able to sort of experience it from afar and I'm still having an amazing time. There are not so many pristine places left in the world. This is what is so special about Svalbard and we try to keep it like this. We try to preserve it and we try to impact it as uh, less as we can. Visit Svalbard, adventures close to the North Pole.